Hey everyone, thanks for joining us once again. We have Midland Health Services and we have Monica joining us. Now, Monica is a health inspector for the city of Midland, so she kind of knows all the safety rules that are in place. But today we're talking about leftovers. So something I'm sure we're all guilty of doing. Maybe you go out to a restaurant, you come home, you have your leftovers, but how are you safely storing them? So let's talk about that first. So Monica, thanks for joining us. But what are some safe practices for anyone who is storing leftover food? Okay, when managing leftovers, you always wrap them up in airtight packaging or seal them in storage containers. These practices help keep bacteria out, retain moisture, and prevent leftovers from picking up orders in the refrigerator. Immediately refrigerate or freeze the wrapped leftovers for rapid cooling. And then when reheating leftovers, be sure they reach a temperature of 165. Reheat soups and sauces, bringing them to a rolling boil. Cover leftovers to reheat. This retains moisture and ensures that food will heat all the way through. So whenever we're talking, so I'm seeing on this graphic right here, if we can pop that back up again. When you're, so three to four days, that's the ideal time. So anything past that, that's kind of creating like a foundation for bacteria, bacteria to grow. Okay, and then, so I didn't know this part, but I, I am someone who does freeze my leftovers a lot, but that causes loss of flavor. Why is that? The longer it is in the freezer, it will cause for it to lose flavor. It's mm -hmm. just how it is. Um, you have um, freezer burn that it can freeze. Um, just won't taste right after a certain amount of time. Okay, so maybe don't freeze your food for too long, guys. Mm -hmm. And then um, what are some creative ways for people to kind of cut down on food waste? Okay, well, you can always um, make soups. For example, um, for bananas, you can make banana bread. Or you can even, like, for um, bananas, you can also make protein smoothies. Those are some examples. If anyone knows, when you're making a mean banana bread, the riper it is, the better The better, it yes, definitely. <laughs> For sure. Okay, so what are some of the recommended guidelines? And from what I understand, you guys follow whatever is recommended by the CDC. Mm -hmm. What are some guidelines that comes to reheating some of those leftovers? Well, you always want, like I said, you always want to make sure you are reheating at the temperature, the correct temperature, which is 165. So some recommended guidelines for um, leftovers are make sure you are cooking at the correct temperature. For example, pork, 145, fish, 145, ground beef, 160, um, and also chicken, 165. And so probably the, a good idea to have a meat thermometer. Yes. Some people don't have one. <laughs> yes. Okay. So that's really the way that you can actually know. I have noticed personally, whenever I'm using a meat thermometer, that there is a difference in how I'm cooking. Because sometimes I just kind of eyeball it, which is not good, especially if you're cooking chicken. So Yes, thermometers are very important. Also, make sure you do have them inside your refrigerator so that it could give you the correct temperature on the inside of the refrigerator oh, okay. as well. And then, so for anyone who doesn't monitor you know, how long they've had leftovers in the fridge. How do you know when it's actually gone bad? Some ways you can tell that leftovers aren't good are you can visually see it if it has mold or if it's slimy. Um, just make sure you throw it out. And then let's go over some of the temperatures again when bacteria starts to grow because we have a graphic that we're going to pop up regarding food poisoning bacteria. And that's really one of the illnesses that can, you know, come from having bad leftover food, right? Yes, ma'am. It is called the danger zone. Those temperatures are from 40 degrees to 140. Some of the bacteria include norovirus, E. coli, salmonella. Salmonella, I know that's something that a lot of us are all familiar with and also E. coli as well. So what are some common foods if they're kept at unsafe temperatures, I guess? they get bacteria that grow, if it grows faster? It is very important that you do keep time and temperature when you do cook. So anytime you do cook or you handle food, it is very important that you keep the time and the temperature. Okay. So always it, have that. Always, <laughs> yeah, have that in mind that when you are cooking, the temperature and the time is very important okay. on all the food. And then does, is it, is meat the one that tends to get bad the most out of all the food groups or does it really just depend on the situation and the temperatures in which the food is? 
You know, you always want to keep the temperatures when it comes to you cooking any food, mm -hmm. not just meat. Um, yeah. Bacteria can grow on any food after it's cooked. So that's why it's so important that you always freeze and refrigerate your food after you're done with it as soon as possible. And don't forget, guys. I know some of you guys who kind of like leave the food in the fridge. I know I'm guilty of that too. Sometimes they just keep it stores in the back and I'm like, oh, it gets all frozen and gross. <laughs> okay. Um, and then what about safe containers? So I know that there are some plastic containers that are, you know, BPA free and stuff like that. What are some containers that you recommend for people to store their leftovers? I recommend you use microwave friendly containers. Um, that would just be up to you if you want to store it. I mean, you want to reheat it in a glass container or um, a store, any storage container, but just make sure it is microwave friendly. If someone is uh, microwaving food, I, I was told not to do it with styrofoam. Is that bad? That would just be up to you. I mean, just what I would recommend is you, if you are storing it in, I mean, if you are heating it in the styrofoam, make sure you are getting all the spots to be at the correct temperature. Make sure you don't have no cold spots. While we're still talking about leftovers, I did see this story last year about this teen who was, I think he was eating pasta. He, then he got super sick that he had to get his legs amputated and his fingers amputated. Why, why is that and why did that happen? When it comes to that story, that's why it's so important that you do know um, what the symptoms are. If you have diarrhea, if you have constant vomiting, it is recommended you go see your doctor as soon as possible. Um, that probably, what caused that was probably because he didn't know he had food poisoning. That's why it got to that point. But it is very, it is, it is recommended that you do go see your doctor and try to get a diagnosis as soon as possible. And so, I mean, with your experience as a, as a health inspector, have is it difficult whenever you, you know, like get reports of people who get food poisoning and then it's hard to kind of track down where that comes from? Yes, it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly where someone got food poisoning, but that's why it's very important that you do know the symptoms. Again, vomiting, fever, stomach pain, diarrhea, and nausea. And it's very important that you also stay hydrated and go see your doctor as soon as possible. How important is it to go see your doctor? I mean, aside from the health part of it, but like to track, right? You want to track some of these reports because you kind of want to know where it's coming from, right? Yes, ma'am. So uh, once we, you do have a diagnosis, it's very important that we do try to track and investigate where it came from. So um, I would suggest you call the health department so that way we can go ahead and do an investigation and try to pinpoint exactly where um, you had you got food poisoning from. And I'm just curious, but how long does it take for the health department to kind of look into this for, let's say, one report of a foodborne illness? So uh, whenever we get complaints, we try to work them as soon as possible, mm -hmm. just because um, we are trying to investigate where um, the food poisoning is coming from. We have to always make sure that the restaurants are cooling correctly, that they are cooking the food correctly, and then make sure that they are having safe practices, for example, washing their hands, um, and then making sure that they are serving the food at the correct temperature as well. That's really the key here, guys. <laughs> make sure you just always know the right temperature in which you are cooking up your food. Okay, and then let's talk about leftover leftovers. So leftover that you've just kind of had for a while. Is it still the same concept? You just need to understand that it needs to be cooked at a certain temperature? Yes, ma'am. Um, leftover leftovers, We I recommend you only do it once just because the taste of the food isn't going to be the same after you reheat it and then put it back in the fridge. Um, so I recommend you always just do it once and then dispose of it. And then what about like let's say you go to a restaurant, you get food, and it's hot here in West Texas, right? So you leave your food in the car, but you're making a pit stop somewhere like, I don't know, meeting with another friend, for example. What are some ways where people can prevent doing that and just leaving their food because then you come back and then your car smells like food so what are some tips or advice that you can give to someone okay some tips that I would give if you are traveling for more than an hour 
then just don't take them just because here in West Texas it is very hot. But for example, if you are taking your leftovers to work, for example, or you're going straight to work, um, it's safe for you to transfer them and then always make sure you do um, cool them as soon as you get to work. But if you are um, traveling more than an hour, then make sure you do have a cooler or um, make sure you store them in the correct temperature. Okay. It should be less than 40. Yeah, like either ice it or, you know, just make sure it's stored at the correct temperature. Okay, that's actually a rule that I need, <laughs> something I need to start doing because I'm a little guilty of that. But all right, well, is there anything else that you'd like anyone else to know out there regarding just food safety or foodborne illnesses? What are some things that the health department offers to people as far as resources go? So when it comes to food safety, always just make sure that you do know the four um, rules, which is hand washing, make sure your cleanliness of the kitchen, um, make sure you are separating your food and not cross-contaminating, and then make sure you are also cooking at the correct temperature and then storing your food safely. Um, there is a two, two four rule, that, which means don't leave the food out in the room temperature for longer than two hours. After two hours, the leftovers need to be refrigerator, re refrigerated or frozen. Your goal is to minimize the time food is in the danger zone between 40 and 140 degrees where bacteria quickly multiplies, the risk of food poisoning is always increased. So leftovers should, be, should not be refrigerated longer, longer than four days. And I think one of the things that has helped me is to put the date right on yes. the container when you're storing it. Yes, make sure you always label and date everything you put inside the refrigerator so that way you are aware of when you cooked it and when you put it inside the the refrigerator. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you, Monica, for joining us. I hope that everyone who watched this, that you got something out of today. And I guess the one thing is if you don't have a meat thermometer, get one. Yes. <laughs> it is life changing and it is great. And it's also important to keep your health um, at bay. So thank you guys once again for joining us. If you want to see more interviews that we have done with the health department, just be sure to log on to newswest9.com and also our app 9 plus. We'll see you guys next time. Oh, my God.